So, moving on to mods. All right. So uh, instead of handing it to Down Phoenix, I'll, I'll 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 talk about this first. Okay. So mods in Fallout. Um, there were mods in the previous games, like in the first game where you could upgrade your uh, your plasma rifle, which was pretty badass, making it use one less uh, action point to shoot. And but but it really it was kind of limited there. And then in Fallout 2, you actually had mods where you could attach something to your weapons to give it more ammo or give it burst fire or something like that. Mm -hmm. Still limited, but it was there. 3 didn't really have any any mods going for it cuz uh did have repairs though. Okay, yeah, but but that didn't really uh that, but that's not really a mod. So right. like I made something it, that would change the weapon and like uh, the way it functions. Yeah, it didn't really have mods, but it had more of a crafting system. Like uh, yes, you, it did. You can create yes, it, things, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, not counting that, but yeah, it it did, and I don't think I made use of that function in four if it was ever uh, there, but in uh, New Vegas it did the same thing with Fallout Two where you could get piece uh, certain pieces of uh, like mod piece that you can add onto your weapons, like you could add a scope to your hunting rifle, a laser sighters, mm -hmm. like faster chambering and all that stuff. Limited, but it was still there. Fallout Four. The modding is ah uh, amazing. I gotta say, I spent so many hours, or at least you know from uh, what's available to you, to yeah. mod whatever you want, make your gun more powerful, make it shoot faster, make it uh, more accurate, and all that stuff. And uh, it it's pretty awesome. When I saw the like the the the, the little bits of footage I saw of Fallout Four, the modding really got me kind of hooked. I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool, and it is. Although, like, when, although, um, once you have, like, you know, you've, uh, put points into the modding perks, it kind of actually gets a little weaker towards the end, because you're always going to be, like, getting the, the best, like, uh, mods, right? I mean, why would you ever get, like, the weakest mods? There's no benefit to it, and the only reason you got those earlier was because you weren't able to use the higher mods. And there are some differences, like um, like for instance, with the guns, you could put automatic fire or non-automatic. I never really used the non-automatics because the damage re reduction was really low. Like it only did one third of what the non-automatic would do. And uh, but but still, going back to the mods, it's pretty awesome, and I really liked it. It's really free and open. Yeah, the mods were really nice the way they implemented it. I mean. It uh, takes a couple different things. First of all, if you're a fan of a game series like Borderlands, where there is like randomly generated guns and that you, you can, can have like millions of different kinds of guns, and never is, getting the one you want. Yeah, exactly. Well, in this game, it's kind of like that, except you eventually can get the one you want because you can pick out different pieces, um, you know, different scopes and stocks and magazines and barrels and all kinds of stuff you know for these guns and uh, there's even some modding with the melee but like the actual melee combat that's kind of really bare bones and then it didn't and it's not helped by the fact that the modding for the melee weapons is less like like uh, like with down phoenix says with the guns like how many things could you mod on the gun down phoenix like just oh. like the categories um there's for some weapons, there's 12 or more categories of things you can choose. Well, okay, well, well, you know, well, wait, I meant sort of like a, like the class, like, you know, barrel, uh, magazine, uh, uh, stock, yeah, scope, and all that. Yeah, that's what I'm referring that. to. There's, yeah, for some weapons, there's like 12 or more different things you can kind of sort through, like different categories is what I mean. Not like 12 possible attachments total, but yeah. But in each one, there's like a whole ton you could do. Yeah, some of them were kind of limited, but, you know, sometimes you had, like, a, a dozen or more different types of attachments for each weapons. You know, like, you could have, like, 16 different scopes or, so, well, maybe not scopes, but, like, Sights. 16 different magazine options, for instance, that can change the caliber of the bullet and can change how many rounds are held, change the rate of fire, and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, but with the melee, there's only, like, just one option. Change, yeah, there's like, like barbed like, wire, spikes, uh, elect yeah. electricity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like say with the baseball bat, you get uh, you, you can put nails in it, you could put barbed wire, and then maybe put it on fire. That's it. 
That's literally it. But well, for a pistol, like, what can you do with a pistol? You can put a, a night vision scope on it. You could have a quick, a large quick release magazine, a uh, fast firing chamber, and all that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like, a melee just is like, in this, in Fallout 4, it just sucks. I, right. I almost, I almost wonder why it's even in this, in this game at points. Yeah, I think it kind of makes sense given the time frame, though, because we have to consider the world that Fallout takes place in. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic world like ours, kind of, you know. I mean, guns are obviously the popular weapon of choice nowadays. You know, how many times when you hear about somebody getting killed, is it by a samurai sword or an axe or something like that? Not very often. Usually it's somebody getting shot. (laughs) And, <laughs> that's a fun way of funny. Or yeah. when I say funny, I don't mean like ha ha funny. Like uh, that's a kind of amusing way to talk about that or compare. Right. So it kind of just makes sense, you know, going into that kind of world, going from now to an eventual nuclear war that might have happened in a couple hundred years past. Is guns are still going to be the most popular weapon of choice. So it kind of makes sense in this game's universe. Um. I guess I'm just a little disappointed that there wasn't more to do with the melee gear. Yeah, I mean, but then, like, when you think about it, there really isn't much you could have done with the melee to a certain degree. Uh, Because, like, uh, there's a death clog uh, gauntlet in this game, and there's only one mod for it, and that's just to add an extra nail to make it do more damage. Mm -hmm. Really disappointing. Like, you couldn't coat it in poison or do something like make the claws sharper so they did more damage or something like that. And just, yeah, it, it, the melee is disappointing of mm-hmm. it. What about the power armor uh, mods? Oh, the power armor is a really interesting addition to Fallout 4. It works a lot differently from the other games. It's actually really interesting that you can get the power armor within like the first hour or so of the game. Like first which, hour, which, hour and a half. Which uh, sounds like, you know, the game blew its load, right? But... Once you get it and then discover there are different armor types and you can actually upgrade your armor, then it doesn't look as ridiculous. And considering Plus you have a Go scarcity on. to the armor system as well. Like in the other games, once you get the power armor, it might not be until at least halfway through the game, if not further. But once you get it, you're wearing it the whole game, essentially. You know, it's like whatever. You never take like, it that's off. That's your armor. Yeah, uh, in this game, there is a lot more scarcity with it because you actually have to fuel the armor with the uh, fusion cores that you find. Which, uh, and, in the beginning, they're, they are kind of hard to find, but at like at the end of my playthrough, I had like almost uh, 80 of them, so yeah. it's a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, you can explore, and you can find them, and you can and barter buy them. For them, and things like that, but at the beginning, they are really hard to come by, so... You can't just walk around in power armor like you could in the classic. Yeah, they, they they changed it. Basically, uh, the, to dumb this down for all of you who don't know, power armor in the previous game once you it once you wear it, it's just like regular armor. But in Fallout Four, they're battery powered, so uh, big difference. Yeah. Anyways, Definitely. so so, so yeah, the mods it introduces the... a scarcity mechanic because you do have to find those fusion cores, of course, later on in the game. You still ha- you you end up having a bunch, and so you can do a few missions in a row that are really tough and not run out. And if you're smart, you'd get the nuclear physicist, which ge- uh, which gives your fusion cores twice the amount of power to give your power armor. And the unfortunate side effect of shooting your fusion cores out by accident. What? Okay, like uh, the the in the go in the perk system, the nuclear physicist or whichever one that gives you like uh, it extends the time of the fusion core. The mm-hmm. final perk skill of that, like the level 5 skill, if you have no grenades in your uh, inventory and you're in a power armor and you hold a grenade button, you launch your nucle- or your uh, fusion core out and it causes a small nuclear bomb behind you. Wow. The, uh, I had no idea. Okay, but this is not as useful as it sounds because uh, you can accidentally fire off a full battery load and just be like, wait, why am I running out of fusion cores? And then... It, you know that just went goes to waste. You can't get yeah. it back. So not it, to mention if you're doing this while you're next to a wall. <laughs> yeah, you could literally just accidentally kill yourself with it. Yeah, that's nice. But yeah, the power armor mods like there, there's upgrading the armor to make it more durable, and uh, probably my favorite is uh, attaching a jetpack to it. I think everyone did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also like how it changes the UI of the game. Whenever you equip the power armor, 
it actually gives you a sense that you're inside this power armor that's got all these different displays and things like that going on. And that's kind of a really cool. Thing yeah, that's that's really a nice nice touch they did. They didn't get they weren't lazy with it like in uh, the previous games where it's it's the same uh, HUD that you were uh, always using. Nice right. little detail. Yeah, there were also like things of the power armor mod. Like uh, I I always like putting like the the calibrated servos to make me carry more items. That was a really useful skill, and I was kind of disappointed at the arms. Like, the mods for the arms, aside from, like, uh, increasing its durability, because uh, you needed melee mods to, like, uh, make it do stuff. And I was like, what? Really? Yeah. Well, I guess that was uh, one way they kind of made that a little more useful to have. Sort of, but it didn't really do much. Like, it gave you, like, bladed arms or, like, uh, energy punches, and it's like, eh, how often are you going to punch people? I mean, it doesn't really do that much. Yeah. I guess, you know, if you did want to play a specific character build and you have the self-control to set it up, then, yeah, have at it. You know, make your own uh, giant mecha robot, you yeah. know. Or a mech ranger. suit. Yeah. Oh, that'd be funny, though, seeing, like, a like a Megazord mod of, like, the power armor. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's got to exist if it doesn't already. Oh, that's got to be funny. It's going to, anyways. Already. Oh, anyways. Going on about the power armor, uh, they... Fallout 4 also changes one thing that the previous uh, uh, Fallout 3 in New Vegas uh, did. Is Did you notice how you didn't need to repair your weapons or armor at all? Except for the oh, power yeah. armor? I was like, that was kind of like a nice welcome break from it. Because like, uh, you know, cause in the previous games, if your weapons get uh, degrade enough, they, they do less damage, they start, uh, you know, malfunctioning and... And that was a cool mechanic, but after a while, it kind of did get a little annoying. So it was a nice break that you didn't have to repair shit in this game, except your power armor. So at least, you know, they kept they, they kept the idea in somewhere, but at least they kept it uh, to one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they took down... It basically uh, d d dumbed down the micromanagement. You know, you didn't have to micromanage nearly as much when it came to your equipment and things like that. That was really nice touch on their part. Um, but they did still keep it somewhat, of course, with the power armor. Again, like I said, I believe it goes into the whole scarcity element of the power armor. You know, you get it right away, but you can't use it all the time. At least not until you get really far in the game, because I, yeah. I ended up using it, like, all the time afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, once you get to that point, yeah, it's just like you have so much of that resource that why not use it? You know, what's the point of not using it? Plus, in some situations, you kind of have to when the game does get tougher. Yeah, it's completely an option. It's just, it's a badass option. Yeah. Oh, what was it, what was it? Did you ever find a point in mixing up armor parts? Because I found it kind of dumb. Like, like pointless dumb. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, you know, there's like, the first armor you get is uh, the T-45, and then there's the T-51, the T-60, and then the X-01 uh, uh, power armor pieces, and it's like, uh... I don't know. I think I got the impression that the game wanted you to mix and match all the p all the pieces and parts, and I'm like, why? What's well, the yeah, point? Well, yeah, I guess you could. I think the whole point of it is just like with the mod system. You know, there are a ton of different upgrades you can do, but some obviously are better than others. But some you can't do right away. Maybe you don't have the necessary skills. Maybe you don't have the necessary materials to make those upgrades. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, like all the power armors have the exact same like mods you can do for them. It's just that some are better than the other. Uh, like, for instance, the the T forty five armor, the first one you get, can have like the um, armor plating level F, which is not the same as the T fifty one, which has more durability and like uh, is a lot stronger. So I'm so well, basically what I'm saying is I don't know why you have the option to, like like interchange parts because because the power armors work best as a set is basically what I'm saying like why would you mix a really weak part with a, with a really strong part because they all have the same mods it's just one's really weak compared to yeah, the other the only thing I could think of for sure on that is sometimes you can find parts scattered in the wasteland you know separate from like a full suit and so if you find like a slightly better armor or whatever why not attach it to your current suit I suppose, but like, you know, after a while, like when you get the full parts, it's like you don't really use the previous parts. There, You actually, oh, you can actually get your companions to wear power armor, which was pretty sweet. 
Except for the fact that they keep getting it destroyed, or at least they find an excuse to get it destroyed. <laughs> like, did yeah. you ever get them into a power armor suit? Yeah, as a matter of fact, you kind of have to when you find new suits. If you're already traveling around with a power armor and you find a new one, and you want to just leave the one you're in at that location. You and, or, and, and or, like, use up a fusion core to move it. Right. You, don't, you don't have to, but, you know, it helps. Yeah, it definitely. helps it, because uh, your companions don't use up fusion cores, you don't have to give any to them, which is good. Although, I don't know what happens if you do give it to them. I wonder if their combat efficiency, like, just goes up, because, like, you can operate a power armor without the fusion core, but mm -hmm. you'd start walking like, um, like a, like a slug, and it yeah. really sucks. I guess they probably just made those changes, like, with, as far as the companions... Is so you didn't have to like micromanage them. The same thing with like ammunition, like for, for guns. You didn't have to like give them a crap load of bullets for a gun for them to use it. Yeah, I'll, and whenever you do, they they kind of tend to burn through them as I uh, as I find. Although that's yeah. not fair, being that I only give them so little. But uh, yeah, anything else you want to say about the mods? Uh, the mods is the mod the modding in Fallout Four is really great. I hope they continue to do it and give more options. Mm -hmm. Wolf it. And not to mention the mods, like the actual PC mods, you know, will definitely expand upon that as well. Not to mention the other, all the tons of other possibilities with that. Which we weren't talking about mods, we were talking about the modding system of the Modding weapons, the game. Like that. Not the actual PC mods, just to, like, in case somebody is, like, confused for, like, the last ten minutes. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, the, the equipments and things you can tweak your weapons and items with. Oh, yeah. Oh wait, no. You could you could like uh, tweak your armor to make it more durable and have certain effects, like more, be more silent or have bigger mm -hmm. pockets. Yep. But yeah, so uh, so that's all the changes I listed off in uh, Fallout Four that I can think of. Uh, I don't know if Down Phoenix has anything that he can uh, add where it's like uh, like what what's something that existed in the previous game that Fallout Four changed? Well, there is a smaller change with the way conversations work. Okay, okay, well, we'll bring that up. So, um, we can kind of touch on this just lightly, because in the classic games, obviously, your character didn't have any voice whatsoever. I mean, your character did say stuff, but no voice. there is no voice, whereas there is an actual voice actor that you had in this game now. Which, it's like, I kind of don't prefer it, because it's like, if I, like, say if I project myself in the game, I don't sound like that guy. I'd rather just have, it with, like, you know, the... the not not silent pro protagonist, but the no voice protagonist, and just have people around referring to me. Yeah, it it, it had a lot more of a Mass Effect ish uh, conversation system, as far as yes, it I did. It. Every, everything seems to be going after the Mass Effectness of it. Yeah, because oh. you know, I I, I kind of get that because it's a nice free flowing conversation, and you don't have to read subtitles or anything like that to understand what's going on. Oh yeah, Unless, a lot yeah. of a lot of people were complaining about the the conversation piece, where it's like, uh, you know how it'll say something like, um, like it gives you, like the options it tells you, it says it'll say this, but you're not sure what it, what your character will actually say. People were complaining about that, and I'm like, yeah, Ugh, it's so what? That's I never liked that in in games personally, and you know, Mass Effect is kind of the worst offender as far as that because it seemed like you had a one option and like. Why the hell did he say that? That's not what it sounded like, you know. That's not um, what. I, that's this not game what. Isn't quite as bad in that regard. Like, it, it it's not what like, you expected them to say when you click that right. option. Exactly. I guess that kind of for some people maybe that kind of introduces the fun into it. But you know, I guess I kind of like to have control over the conversation. Like I want to know when I select a certain option, what the general theme at least is. Because like in pre in previous games, you say exactly what you select. Mm -hmm. So at least you know you you know full well what they're going to say. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, did you know that uh, there's a really interesting feature in this game where uh, the other characters can actually acknowledge your name if it's actually on the list of names? Oh, yeah, like Codsworth, the robot. Yeah, I... I Not really a spoiler, because you meet him, like, at the beginning of the game. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's one of your companions. Any characters we name, it's not really a spoiler, because considering you also have to find them, too. But, yeah, so, uh, for instance... Uh, if you have a if you have an actual name and you give it to your character, 
Uh, and if it's on the list, other characters in the game will actually call you by the name. It's kind of cool. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that. So, and I went through the game with my username. So I was like, oh, I really would have liked to see that feature because that's kind of cool. Same here. Yeah, that's what I did as well. Is your but, name actually um, on the list? Interesting. You can have names like, uh, I, I don't know, is this uh, going to be censored? Like fuckface and dumbass. <laughs> no, we can say all that. Fuckface, dumbass. <laughs> Cause come on, come on! It'd be called fuckface the whole game if you wanted. So that's just awesome. Wait, wait! Do they actually acknowledge that? Yes. Like they'll like Hodgman will be like, "Oh, master fuckface, how are you doing?" Yes. Really? <laughs> now I gotta, I gotta see. Yeah, this. look up the list. There's all kinds of crazy names on there. That the and, like, uh, that they actually voiced. Yeah, and then Jim Sterling. You know, you know who he is. Obviously, oh, I guess God. right. Apparently they Trying have Sterling clever. in there, and he believes that they threw that in just for him, which could be highly likely. But I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of conceited. Like, oh look at me! I'm so clever, and uh, from trying to so hard that game companies actually acknowledge me. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Just no. Right. Yeah. Like you know, my name's actually on the list, but I didn't say anything. Like, oh, they had they they acknowledge Wizward. Wizward's mighty. You must uh, yada yada yada. No, I no, just no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, going back to conversations, uh, and also going back to the perk system, did you know? I it it took me a little while to notice, but I found that like you know the the speech checks you do in this game are kind of worthless. Yeah, it's totally based on attributes, really, and then occasionally no, a certain perk but, might help in certain situations, but wait, for really? the most part, it's attributes. I didn't know certain perks actually helped in certain conversations. If I, if I remember right, yes, it does. Like, well, it may in give four? you like different conversation options if I remember right. But well, there, there's like there's like the um, not humiliate, but like threaten, which uh, presumably uses strength, and then other stuff, charisma, where you try to talk it through. What I'm basically trying to say is like, unlike previous games, it doesn't really. Because whenever I used it, it, it just gives you XP and you got a little bit more out of the story. It didn't do anything like it got you past the guard or it's like, you know, it stopped combat or avoided combat. Anything well, sometimes, like that. Yeah, it does. I've been uh, out of combat scenarios be with conversation before. Oh, uh, like which one? Because, uh. Because I don't really. Because, like. I, like, I don't know specifically offhand right now. And as a matter of fact, it'd probably be best not to discuss a specific scenario because it might be a spoiler. Well, but the, uh, but I depends. think I have encountered a couple situations like that that it was important. It didn't seem as important as Fallout Three or previous games, obviously. Yeah, Our where like uh, a lot more important in those. Yeah, which goes back to the whole making your character. You really can't make a charismatic character like a non like I actually I looked up someone's review of Fallout Four and they brought up the fact that they weren't able to play as like a a passive character where that can talk their way through because if. Um, Actually, somebody has beat the game without killing anybody. In the original games? or In Fallout 4. Really? Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, it kind of broke the game in certain aspects. How so? Um, just, just look into it. It's a really interesting read um, that I saw here. But yeah, some guy actually successfully beat the game with just conversation. He didn't kill anybody. Now, that's to say that there, there was situations that people did die. He just had nothing to do with their death. No. Oh, well, and it, hmm. That's yeah. interesting. I have to see because the from the review I saw, like the guy tried to be charismatic and sneaky, but he still had to have some points in combat to like actually survive the game. Yeah. Well, the guy had to exploit some certain things. He had to do a lot of save loads, obviously. Oh, and, see uh, then. Uh, okay, okay. In a natural progression of the game, without doing those save loads and stuff. Being a charismatic character in Fallout 4 is not that viable. Right, I right. I mean, yeah, there are situations where you have to get into combat. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the review I was talking about also said, like, um, this game is kind of kill-crazy. Like, it's just always combat after combat after combat. And after thinking about it, I was like, yeah. I mean, sure, in other games you, you kill 90% of the times, but this one in Fallout 4... You that's pretty much ninety percent of the game, like like even more so. Like that mm -hmm. every encounter, it's just like I don't talk with people. Uh, well, nobody talks with raiders. You just shoot them on sight. But it's just mostly combat after combat. Like I liked it, but I can't deny that you know Fallout Four is rather uh, a little too actiony for a yeah, Fallout game. Yeah, I think it. 
I think it kind of goes into earlier when I was mentioning the world felt more alive. Mm-hmm. There is definitely a lot more stuff you encounter yes, in indeed. this game than there was in the past games, like the, as far as the frequency of how often you encounter stuff. And not all of it is aggressive, obviously, but... You know, it could potentially be if you're an evil character, right? So, or um, because, uh, or because your radar said like, "Oh, this character's a uh, enemy." Yeah, and that, and there is actually some circumstances where you might find a red enemy that may not aggro on you. Some special cases. Yeah, uh, but for the most part, yeah, it does seem more actiony. But I think it's mainly kind of drew to the fact that the world is more alive. There just seems to be more characters in the world to encounter both random and quest uh, you know preset characters yeah preset 